It's Brian Preston, the money guy. All right, Alex G has a question. In step number five of the foo, how can I decide if a Roth IRA or a Roth TSP is better better for me? And that's a federal employee version of a 401k he mentioned in case anybody was wondering. And are there cases when the HSA doesn't make sense? Because from my brief analysis, it's telling me that it's not right for my current situation. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? All right. So his first question, uh, how do I decide between Roth IRA and Roth TSP? She already mentioned Roth TSP. It's just a government thrift savings plan. Operates very, very similar to a 401k. So how do I decide between Roth IRA, Roth 401k? Yeah, we, we typically prioritize the Roth IRA between those two. Now, look, there's a little caveat here. Because remember, step two, I think it's important because financial order of operations, if you go to moneyguy.com slash resources, because it's amazing to me when I see the comments and people go, what's foo? Go to moneyguy.com slash resources. You can download the free deliverable of the financial order of operations. If you want to deep dive, go to learn.moneyguy.com. We actually have a full course on it. Step two, before we get to five, you got step two, which is that free money in your 401k, you know, 403b. This is a TSP. Um, always get the free money first. So if you so that would come, that would be first. But then when you get to step five, now you're trying to figure out where does that dollar go? Should I go Roth IRA, Roth TSP? Well, here's the problem. You don't control what the investment options in that TSP mm-hmm. are. The government did. They mm-hmm. so they structured it, and you know there's very few investment options in that TSP. Whereas the Roth IRA. You control that a hundred percent, and the fact that you, um, if if you want to put S and P five hundred, if you want to put total market index, if you want to do a, a you know an index target retirement fund, if you want to put it in real estate, I mean, you you control the expenses that you're paying. You control who the custodian is, whether it's Fidelity, Vanguard, Charles Schwab. You have complete control. And then also remember that Roth IRA when you get to be ripe and older mm-hmm. and you have required minimum distributions kicking in, you you get don't have to worry about that with the Roth IRA. Also remember, and this is something we kind of whisper it when we talk about it, that Roth IRA also has the ability that if you got into really dire situations, it can be an emergency mm-hmm. fund. Bo, kind of walk them through what that break glass emergency fund, whereas your TSP is not going to let you have that. Yeah. Uh, when when it comes to Roth IRAs, you can always get to your basis in that account, the contributions you've put in. So if you put in $5,000 this year and $5,000 next year and $5,000 the year after, you can always get back to that $15,000 penalty-free, tax-free if you needed to. But you don't want to do that because those Roth dollars are so, 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 so valuable. Now, the only other two th- things I would mention is Roth IRAs have an income limit to be able to contribute to them. Once you make over a certain amount of money, Great you point. can't contribute to Roth anymore. The Roth TSP does not have that. So even if you're over the income limit, you can still do the Roth TSP option. And they have different caps on how much you can do. With a Roth IRA, you're capped at $6,000. With a Roth TSP, you can go all the way up to $20,500 inside of that account. So those are kind of the big differences. What about Alex's separate second question, Brian? He goes, are there ever scenarios where HSAs, health savings accounts, don't make sense? Or do I always select the HSA option no matter what? Well, of course. I mean, there's a, that's why you have to look at your individual situations. We love health savings accounts, but there are times in your life, like if you know you're, you're – and look – this is why I can't believe in open enrollment, they let you take advantage of all this planning because mm-hmm. it feels like you really are getting away with something. If you know you're growing your family in the year that, you know, the, the open enrollment comes around, that, that something big's going to happen, uh, like having a baby, mm-hmm. you might not want the HSA because right. you know, I mean, the thing, what is a what, what, what is required to have a health savings account? We love the health savings accounts because they, they, they're triple tax advantage, but what we, what, but and we love that fact, but but what it requires is you have to have a high deductible health insurance plan attached to it. Well, by its sheer name, you can tell high deductible health insurance. High deductible means you pay a high deductible. are going to pay a very high deductible. So if you know, you know, the whole benefit of health savings accounts and other things is while you're young and healthy, fortunately, you don't need a lot of medical expenses. So you can let that money kind of build in the background and grow. But when you're young, you also might have a growing family. And as Bo can share, having babies and Rebe can share, 
having babies is expensive. Expensive. So take advantage of the planning. If the go, if you know, if the way these things are taken advantage of, they're encouraging you to handicap every year. Are there going to be big expenses? If there are, maybe I want to do deal with copays and that PPO or, or you know, or some other type of structure versus. You know, my cafeteria plan lets me do the health savings account. If you're rocking and rolling and you know that I'm not going to have any children, I'm not going to have any big procedures this year, then take advantage of that. You, you you can handicap that every year and maximize the planning opportunity. Here's how I compare the cost. It's a ledger and it has three, col- or three rows that I would use. First row, difference in the uh, HMO, PPO coverage premium-wise. High deductible plan, premium wise. Then you estimate what you spend on healthcare. Do you go to the doctor? Do you pay copays? Do you have prescriptions? You figure out what you pay for that same same healthcare at each one of the plans. And then the third one is the tax savings from the HSA contribution. You add up column A, you add up column B. Whichever one is more advantageous is the one that you go with. Now, oftentimes it flips. Some years you might do the HSA, or some years, like Brian said, you might do the Cadillac. Every year at open enrollment, if I were you, I would do the calculation. 